Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from QuarterNight.com. Today is Sunday the 11th of December 2022 and this talk is a follow-up from the previous one which if I remember I will link to below. That was an, uh, a sort of a summary of uh, some of the major pitfalls about learning Arabic in various scenarios. I mean the Arabic for the Quran um, and, and all of that. Uh, more of a sort of theoretical basis and I recommend watching it if you want to understand this one better. People won't, but you know, it's worth saying it. So anyway, I'll link to it below. The, in this in this video, what I want to do is to give a how-to of what I was kind of talking about there. It, this is the best of what I've learned during my own process. And I'm going to demonstrate that in this talk. I did consider, I did consider... Uh, spending uh, a lot of time in the next three or four years sort of making a huge course to demonstrate all of this and help people learn but i'm not going to do that uh, and because i don't think it's worth it i don't think that the the uh, demand is there and i'm going to dedicate my time to other things but there still will be i believe a, a small number of people who are intelligent enough and dedicated enough to make the effort and for those people this should be sufficient so and the rest of them, it, it doesn't matter what you do, <laughs> they won't do anything. So that's the truth of the matter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through um, a process, an iteration. And in summary, the, 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 the point of this is really it's about noticing. Now, you can spend your time learning or trying to learn, you know, memory cards or learn words and all the rest of it. It all becomes very depressing and almost pointless, uh, I think what really works is is noticing and understanding and creating connections in your mind because that's how you learn your own language you see that's what you did you didn't you didn't learn that i want a cup of tea that cup isn't you know is a direct object of want and that it's uh, in the accusative case you didn't know any of this you just learnt phrases and then you saw the word cup in different contexts and little by little you sort of acquired a, a feeling about cup well, this is how Arabic works. Any language works this way. And um, I, I do recommend that you watch the last video because I talk about Ren, uh, Ren, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and his achievements in speaking English and the fact that he hasn't clearly learnt you know, the, it grammatically. He's just learnt it by contextually and that he speaks pretty decent English. And, and also the fact that football players, it's not academics, it's not students, it's not people who like reading books like me, who necessarily do very well in languages. It's, it's people who, uh, or it can be those people, but it's, it's only when you have fun with it and when you're, you're able to deal with ambiguity. This is how it works, okay? And the, the problem with, I'm not just saying about teaching the teaching of Quranic Arabic, but teaching of languages in general in an academic environment is that it um, concentrates on making it all like maths where there are exercises and, and so on. And it's not only that it's boring, it's actually the wrong the wrong way of approaching it because a language is much more, learning to speak a foreign language is much, much more like learning to play tennis than it is learning to do differential equations or something. But in this one, I'm going to give you a kind of an example of a process that I've developed. And also I will link below to some resources and you can work the rest out for yourself. Obviously develop it, you know, change it, what works for you. But... What I'm really doing in this is I'm simulating um, experience and provoking noticing. And these are the things that work. All right. So, and also that there's, there are levels that are kind of, it's iterative. There are, you're going through passes rather than, you know, verse one, learn all the vocabulary. Verse two, learn the vocabulary. That, that doesn't really work because that's not how we learnt our languages. You didn't, you, what you did is you came across a word and you think, ah, oh, I'll give you an example. Just give you an example from from literature. Um, I, my background was in Russian, so I, I read "Преступление uh, наказание," uh, which is a uh, crime and punishment by Dostoevsky. So let's let's say you're reading you're reading "Crime and Punishment" by Dostoevsky, and you come to the moment where um, the the main character, whose name slips my mind at the moment, he. Uh, Raskolnikov. Raskolnikov, he's there and he's about to murder, he's about to murder the 
uh, the the user, this lady who lends money uh, on on for 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 percent percentages, whatever it's called. Um, it's pratsenting in, in Russian. So, because my brain's kind of gone over into the Russian side, and so let's say you're reading it and you come across the word tapor, which is quite quite important in the context, right? It means, but let's say you think oh, I don't really need it, but you you've come across it and noticed that you don't know it. But that's one noticing. And then, you know, Raskolnikov picks up the tapor. Well, OK, perhaps this is more interesting. Perhaps perhaps I need to know what this is now. And eventually, Raskolnikov is killing this woman with a tapor. Now, now you, you've got a real reason. You've, you've, you've noticed it once. You think, oh, I don't care. You noticed it again. You think, oh, perhaps it's interesting. And now you think, well, actually, I do need this. And what's happening in your mind is you're kind of, you're kind of making a crevice and breaking up the ground in your mind for a reason to own this thing. And that's what it's really about. Kind of memorizing for memorizing sake becomes very, very, very dull very, very quickly. Tapur means axe. Okay. And by the time Raskolnikov is killing this old woman with this tapur, you know what this thing is and you want to know what it is. It's important. But if you come across a word and you don't know what it and you don't have a reason to learn it, don't, don't learn it. Okay. Now you can say, well, obviously every word in the Quran is very important, blah, blah, blah. And that's that's true to an extent. But I would say approach it in this kind of iterative, like you're going over. It's more like um, it's more like paint washes. If you've ever painted walls where you're building up or, or canvases where you're building up a, a, a color over iterations. This is what works. This is how life is. And what, what, I've, what I'm trying to do with this is, is give us sort of a. What you're building up is is noticing and experience rather than sitting there trying to learn, you know, a word. Because you wouldn't do that except for examinations. And then what happens is you forget it instantaneously and it doesn't work. All right. So what I'm going to do, I've got I've taken photographs of the and I'm going to put those into this of the, the key bits. But what we're going to start with is a base. Now, you can get this, uh, you can buy this book or you can download it for free. I didn't write this book. This is Muhammad Mohar Ali, who's wrote a book, who wrote a book called A Word for Word Meaning of the Quran. Now, do I agree with every single definition in this? No, I don't. Do I take any notice of his, you know, other extraneous uh, um, annotations and thoughts? No, I completely ignore them. But that's me. You may find them useful. However, uh, this is it. I actually have a hard copy of this book. Uh, which way is it? Um, that way. That's it. But you don't really need it. You need a, what you need for what we're going to do is is a computer and a printer and some paper. Uh, you'll need one of these, a, a yellow crayon or a crayon in the color of your choice. I choose yellow, um, a pen, some paper. Uh, I use a folder. So, so for example, let's say I'm, I'm using a folder like this and it's got the, the, the pieces of paper that we're going to get to in a minute in it and a copy of the Quran in the, in the, you know, in the font or the kind of mushaf of your, of your choice. So, that's what you. That's all you really need, and be, and, and and a printer. And I'll put a link uh, to where you, or you can find them. You can find these things online. You just need to, you know, you need to look them up. But you can get them, download them. This word for word translation, you can get it. So what we're going to look at is just the first few verses of Surah sixty eight. And as I say in my talk yesterday, what you really want to concentrate in is on the surahs between fifty and one hundred and fourteen, the end of the Quran. And read these on a regular basis because reading them and rereading them and rereading them is going to be your process of, um, you know, spaced repetition. And also because there's the the vast majority, not all, but the, the majority of the of roots or words which occur only once in the Quran are found in this space. So w once you've learnt, as I talked about yesterday, if you, once you've learnt like a hundred words, two hundred words, you can read. A large amount of the Quran, but the frustrating point is getting this other, more difficult vocabulary under your belt. Now, obviously, you know you could say, "Oh well, you know, Anki cards and memorize and all the rest of it," and if that works for you, okay. But it doesn't really work for me. What works for me is this: is noticing and reading, because we, the the way to read is to read. Okay, you can't wait for perfection then start. And I used to find this with uh, when I used to teach languages that. Um, a, a lot of Russians in this case, who when I was a language teacher, I no longer do it, but you, you'd find a lot of them that they were waiting for perfection in order to begin. Well, it doesn't work that way around with languages. It, it just doesn't. 
Uh, children are much better at this because they understand that they make mistakes and so on. But it's more about beginning and then, then you know, heading in the, in the direction of something approaching perfection. Um, so anyway, now what we're going to do, we're going to start with, I say that this, uh, this chap has written a very good, it's a very good base. But before we get to it, what we do is we start with, you know, the copy of the Quran. So there we have it. And we read it. Let's, we're taking, for example, um, we're taking, for example, that's a sort of 68. So we just start this and read it through once, noticing what we know, noticing what we don't know, um, using our yellow marker to mark, let's say, words that we don't know or perhaps we do know them or we're familiar with them but we're not, not so sure we have an interest in these words let's put it that way and so we mark them i would say you'd kind of need to have the first you know maybe a hundred words before you start this process and you know you, you have to be able to you know read obviously the letters and approximate pronunciation and all of that but that's that's quite easy that's not what knocks people it's the next stage it's this it's it's kind of understanding all the grammar and um, this chap, uh, Muhammad Mahar Ali, he does a, he uses, unfortunately, he uses sort of Western nomenclature for the grammar, which is something I'm not particularly a big fan of, but it's it's a lot better than nothing. So you, it's a really great starting point, and, and a lot of that hard, arduous, boring work has been done for, for you. So you read it through. And I'm, I'm, I'll put up a, let's say, you know, I don't know or I'm not sure of these particular words. So we're looking at verses. Well, actually, what we're doing is we, we're using his book. We print out the page, which I'm going to put up on the, on, on there. Um, and this, this deals with 68 verses 1 through 4. So I read the whole of the surah first, not just the bit that I'm interested in. I read the whole of it. And then I'm, what I'm looking for, is I, as, as I mentioned before, is you quite often find that particular surahs teach you particular things. Um, for example, particular patterns. And what I noticed, let's say I'm doing sort of 68, is that there are partic particular patterns that, that occur. And I'm going to put this up on the screen, but here it is, you know, just, just, just for now. Um, so I notice that there are these patterns. I'm, I'm not so interested in what they mean at this point, but I, I'm noticing that there are these um, these types of patterns. So, for example, um, I, I notice that there's this uh, sort of broken pattern with a t at the beginning. Um, so I, I, I jot those down. I notice that there's this makzum, uh, mafmoon, majnoon, mamnoon, maf. You see, you're just noticing patterns at this point. It doesn't really matter what they mean. If you know, great. If you don't know, it's not a big problem. But then, then you notice other patterns. This is all 68. Okay? You'll, you'll find, especially in these surahs between 50 and the end of the Quran, that there will be uh, uh, sort of comparable patterns. So, Mahin, uh, Azim, Namim, Athim, Zanim, Naim, Zaim. You see, you see, you're getting these and, and what you do is just write them down, group them together. And that becomes already you've got a sort of a point of interest. It doesn't so much matter what the words mean at this point. So that's a, a first pass. And, you know, let's say you're marking the words that are of interest to you with you with your pen. Now, you've been through it once. Now, you already have a kind of a sense of what it means. You have a sense of uh the kind of things that you're going to be learning, it's a lesson in this particular surah. Uh, you have a sense of, you can see straight away from the page what, you know, where the areas that are of interest to you, where they lie. So what you could then do is then, you know, find a dictionary, stick these words into Anki and try and memorize, memorize them every time you're in, you know, standing in the queue in the supermarket. I don't personally find that particularly useful. What I find useful is... Uh, learning how words work and by reading those words that's how you learn okay that's how i learn anyway so let's say you've printed off so you print off that page now this is the page from the book that i just mentioned and I, uh, you'll be able to find that i'll put the name of it down below anyway and you can find a pdf the pdfs of it all over the internet and just download it there you are so print off that page so there you are you've printed off 
that page. I'll put it up on the, on the screen. And now what you're looking at, you're looking at the verses, you're looking at your, your copy of the Quran, and you see the words that you're interested in, and just mark in yellow the translations of those words that you're interested in. Maybe read his notes, you know. So he said, okay, it's imperfective from, you know, from this. Yes, uh, Taruna. Okay, so we've got that. And you look at, do I want to know any more? It, does this answer all the questions I have about this word? Is there any more that I need to know about this word? Now, it may be that you kind of already know this word. And uh, he's just reminded you. And there you are. And now you remember that now you know. And you have another experience of it. Great. Now, that's enough for me. But it may be. It may be that, no, this is a word that you wanted to de develop. In any case, let's say, let's say I don't know, you know, let's say it's four or five words on here. Now, the next stage would be, and I recommend using reader.coronite.com um, because all of this has been done for you. So you, you go to the next stage. So you take these words. So let's say, for example, walqalami. So I put walqalami, the word is qalam, and it's it's an oath, walqalami, by the pen. I'm, I'm using the, the context, I'm using the way it's used on in in this context and we put it in here and then you can do this really easily from from reader.coronite.com uh, it lists any all the other instances where this word occurs in the quran now with the next word yasturuna uh, yasturuna yasturuna uh, there aren't very many uses of it uh, in this form which uh, yasturuna is a form one verb but it occurs the root occurs in other places so let's say a way of differentiating this would be so instead of justifying it to the left you justify it to the right and it just gives you a, a visual indication that what you're dealing here with is things based on the same root as opposed to the same actual form same actual word and just stick them in there and then the next one and then the next one, next one, next one. And you're just, it's very easy. This will take you a couple of minutes, but it's worth doing. And I'll get to why it's worth doing it in a minute. So you've got that, so you're ready to go. The next thing that you do while you're in, while you're in reader.coronite.com is, is you click on the arrows down below and it's a dictionary. So it takes you to the dictionary. And a good dictionary is, is words uh, dictionary. And just print off the pages which pertain, or not even print them off. What you can do is... Um, sort of hook them into a single document and then print off that whole document it's really easy to do uh, or print them off from the screen whatever, whatever works for you and what the reason why you're doing this is because of how arabic works and i suppose english works to some degree to some degree in a similar sort of way but with arabic it's much more pronounced than this and i'll give you an example so say for example we've got uh, it's we don't really think in these terms but we, we do use roots to some extent. So let's say, for example, hosp. So we, we've got the word hospital, hospitality, hospice, hospitable, all coming from this same root. And they'll be quite close to each other in the dictionary. With Arabic, it's far more pronounced than that. The way that the roots work, forming verbs, types of verbs, and all the rest of it. Now, are we looking to learn everything about this? No, we're not. I'm going to give an example, maybe a better example. Um, yeah, let's use this one. So what you're looking for, and I'll put this up on the screen. So we, we've got here, we've got a sotara, which is the, 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 the verb form which we're dealing with. Just read about it. Okay, it means this, it means this, it means to draw lines, it means... It. So you're, you're building up a picture of what it means. But you also notice uh, that other words which occur in the Quran, for example, the word which means legend or saga or myth comes from the same root. Well, this is this is interesting, or it should be interesting, especially this word occurs in the Quran. So you're basically looking for the, the points of interest. And it's not that you're trying to memorize all of this stuff. What you're trying to do is getting a sense of what, what this what this root means how it forms verbs perhaps you'll recognize something you already know and you're linking all this stuff together and it becomes interesting on that basis and so seeing it's learning this word not just as a word but seeing all the other forms that are made from it are you trying to memorize all of these no you're not you're building up a picture of where this word fits into that particular context because a man is known by his friends and by his enemies but in this case by their by their relatives so let's put it this way 
And you're looking at the kind of relatives this word has. So rather than trying to memorize this word outside of any sort of context of what it is and what it does, you're looking at it as part of a network of, of other things which use the same the same root. And you do that for each of these words. And what you're really looking for is to build up a picture, an image. And the more you do it, you go over these things. And if any point of interest jumps out at you, um, that's another thing. It's not another thing to learn. What happens is, is if you're not learning it, it's difficult. It's because you don't know enough about it. It's not because there's too much to learn. It's because there isn't, you haven't learned enough. So what you want to do is, if it's a verb form, see if you can learn, you know, you should try to learn uh, the, the, you know, the, the past, the present, and the, you know, the sort of the verbal noun. That will give you a much better grip on what it does. Look, if you just, what you're doing is you're, you're, uh, let's say you're interested in in uh, the word, you know, Turkey or Turkey, the country Turkey. It's it's going to be much easier to learn that word if you know something about Turkey, if you know something of its history in the Ottoman Empire or whatever it is. And the, the the word Turkey becomes much more integrated into all of this. And this is the way it works. So that's that's the next step. Now it it might seem like this is extra work, but compare it with trying to learn word lists okay and we're going to get to the next stage of this so you've been through another stage and you go back and you read the verses again with what you now know now as you go through this what you'll find is there'll be some other things that you didn't know that become interesting so for example column uh, on which we've already had you know well column uh, column column meaning you know meaning pen and then there's another word huluk huluk so, okay, they're different kinds of words, but what's interesting is is that they're they're plural, as you'll discover when you go through these you know these these dictionary pages, are are formed in the same way. Now, Arabic plurals are complicated in the sense that you have to learn patterns, and you, but but the more that you've got to link things together, the easier it is. And what's interesting is aklam, aklam, aklam is pens, and akhlaq is the plural of khuluk. And these occur very close together. And so you've got another. Ah, oh, OK, so I know this word. I know this word. And what's interesting, they both have the same. They both form a plural on the same pattern. It's another thing to notice. It's the noticing of things, which which is how we learned our own language. We didn't learn word lists. We didn't learn all this stuff. Now, it doesn't mean you can just read and not. You know, there is no effort. It's a matter of where you put the effort. So rather than putting the effort into this really mindless pointless to my mind self-defeating process of trying to bash these words into your head and you're you, because you're logical you think this is boring and you're, you're you're saying yes but i need it but it's boring yes it is boring rather than doing that what you're doing is using your energy to to notice stuff and and that's what works now going back to i had another piece of paper that i want to write ah yes so um Yes. So on the back of this piece of paper, say, where you've, where you've got this going on, as you're going through the, the dictionary definitions, looking at them, anything which seems interesting to you, just write them on the back. So I've, I've, I've done that and I've, I've noticed, OK, qalamun and aqlam is the plural and then khuluk and akhlaq is the plural. So that's something I've noticed. I've also noticed we've got uh, ni'matun. Ni'matun, it means grace or blessings. Um, I've, I've jotted down what the plural what the plural of that is. And I've, I've also jotted down a little plus sign, which means, okay, there's more than one plural to this, but, but who cares? Who's going to sit and learn three or four plurals? Let's not bother with that. But I've just noticed that as a thing, I've noticed it, okay? And then I've just, because, you know, I've, I've jotted down what the, what the, the form one verb pattern is, you know, past and and, well, perfective and imperfective. And I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. So it's na'ama, na'ama, and it means to live in luxury, to lead a carefree life. But then the, the form two, which is kind of intensification, it means to pamper, okay, or to accustom to luxury. Well, that, that makes sense. And then we've got the form four, which is to make good, make comfortable, to uh, and, um, and to bestow favours. So those are interesting things to me. Are they things that I'm going to sit and memorize? No, they're not. But I've noticed those things. All I'm doing is noticing stuff, I'm jotting it down. I've noticed all of those things. All right. So I've been through that process. Uh, what you've got to compare this to is, is learning words. What I'm doing is building networks in my mind. And 
so that's that pass. Now we get to the end of that pass, that page of um, of Moha Ali's book, and what we've done is we've expanded it because quite a lot of what he does is quite limited and frankly, you know, sort of derived from a sect, in places from a sectarian point of view. Um, if you want, you can look at my work to look at, you know, extra sort of context. You can look at, you know, other people's work, whatever it is. But you're building up a network, a picture of what this word looks looks like. Now, we get to the next point, which, remember, we made this page, which I'll put up on the screen, and we've got all of these verses. And so with the, with the first one, وَالْقَلَمُ uh, وَالْقَلَمِ, rather, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's an oath. So it's... Um, Majurur. Um, I've got verse 344, 31, 27, 61, 68, 1, which is the one where we found it, and 96, 4. Go to those verses. You turn to your copy of the Quran, you go to those verses and read those verses. You'll pick up the plural, you'll have that confirmed, you'll see the same word in different contexts, you'll understand that kalama as a as a as a verb. It doesn't mean to write, it means to lop off or to pair like a piece of wood. And and suddenly that will start to make sense. And what you're doing is you're building up a feeling of this word. Okay? Then you go to the next one. So in our case, it's yasturuna. So yasturuna, uh, we understand that it means to write to some extent. Now what I've done in this case is I've I've right justified it. And the reason is is because there aren't really I don't think there is even another example of this of this verb, maybe this one, but not very much. But there are quite a few words based on the same root. And what you're then going to do is go through all of those, or you know, a number of them. I'm for example, you might have, you know, an awful lot of verses, but but say, you know, if, I think you should, you know, try, try, try. If there are ten, you should try to read them and read those verses and observe. Observe, ah, oh, what's this doing? Ah, okay. So you have the word for, you have the word for legends. Well, that's an interesting piece. You know, you can understand. Look at the context. It's in the context of a kitab, zubur. It's in the context of legends of the former peoples. It's being used uh, as a word which means overseer. Well, an overseer sort of writes, you know, he's a sort of like the person who keeps the record, who, who, who is control, in control of that. You're building up a picture. And at the end of that process, this word, which just, you know, if you just learnt this one word, you know, yasturuna or, you know, sotara, for example, you just learnt the root, you have, it's, it's a friend in isolation. Or it's a, it's it's an it's a person in isolation, but what you're doing is you're building up, uh, you're placing that person in the context of his friends, and now you have a relationship because you can place. It's the placing of the word that makes the connections of, and this is a process of noticing, which makes it a valuable mm, way of learning and. And not only will you at the end of this process be able to read sort of sixty eight. You will have been able to read, you will have read a whole ton of other verses. Now, it's one thing to read a verse just as a learner. It's one thing to read a verse when you you know the, let's say you know the surah, you know the context, and you know, you sort of, you, you, you know it because of what one thing leads to another. But when you jump into a verse, as it were, cold, uh, related, your mind now it has to seek really quickly what's going on in this verse. Now, let's say you don't know a word or two in this other verse, this sort of reference verse. Let it go. Let it go. That's fine. You're not here to heap more work on yourself. You're there. You can notice that I don't. Ah, I noticed this. I noticed that I don't know that or I can't remember that word. Or perhaps the syntax syntax is, you know, more complicated or less complicated here and there. But if you read, let's say, you know, X amount of these verses, by the time you get to it, you've spent what you've done is you've spent more time reading the Quran and less time uh, kind of beating yourself up about how impossible and difficult it is to learn a word out of context. And I think that this, anyway, for me, this, you're, 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 you're learning, you're building up these connections and, and you're reading. And it's the reading and, and that's what's, whether you're reading in this rather kind of um, almost um, disparate way, way it's spread across the, the Quran, a verse here, a verse here, a verse here, or you're reading in a in, in a, a more of a, a a block sense. You know, you're you're reading the first page of of 
sort of 68, the second page and so on. And now you can read the whole thing. Now, once you've got the whole thing, and this is why I say I concentrate on these these blocks at the, at the, in the latter portion of the Quran, is that then that can become, excuse me, a moment, that can become a part of your process. You can learn. I mean, now you know so much about this sort of why not why not memorize it? Why not memorize at least some of it? In fact, you'll find that you you kind of do because you're reading these verses over again to go back and reference other stuff. And you you find, oh you know, well qalami, well ma yasturuna. I've already got that bit. Well what comes next? And then you you you're you're building up, you're piecing it all together, and your mind is retaining it because it has a reason to. It's we are kind of logical. And just giving people, telling people they ought to because of this and because of that doesn't mean anything. Your mind will soak in and, and ideas of, oh, it's because, you know, uh, children, it's easier for children. It's easier for children because they're doing what I'm talking about. That's how they're learning. I don't believe that it's easier necessarily for children to learn a language. I think what it is is that children have better strategies for learning language. What they do is they're, they're, they're saying, what, what, what is this thing doing it, they're noticing, they're curious, they want to know why. Who are your friends? What are you with? What are you working with? That's what children are working out. They're working out, they're piecing together their world. That's what you need to do with the Quran. You need to piece it together. And that is learning. Whereas trying to memorize rules and laws and all the rest of it, that's it, it might work for certain types of pointless examinations which where you just basically go to the examination and you regurgitate everything you're kind of holding this knowledge that you've crammed into your head almost in, in in a kind of bowl that's full to the brim and you you walk into the examination hall you kind of you, you don't want to spill this thing because if you've lost that once it goes that's it it's done i, I uh, anecdote time i one of my papers in, in, when I was studying Russian was the, the history of Russian language going back to old church Slavonic and old Polish and Oh, Ukrainian! It was, it was. I suppose the, some of the concepts were interesting, but you know, metathesis and all this stuff, and you know, asa became wopsa, and oh, it's just just a nightmare. And you, you know, I I memorized all the verb conjugations or whatever it was for Polish and something, 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 something. By the time I got out of that exam, and I'd pieced it all together, I'd connected it using certain types of like memory tricks. Uh, I think I used uh, Winnie the Pooh. So I, some poems from Winnie the Pooh that I knew really, really well. I attached for parts of this thing to each word of, you know, when I was one, I'd just begun. When I was two, I was nearly new. So each word, when I was one, it's okay. So one is connected to this. Da, 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 da. And I'd created all these kind of mental network. And it can work. It can work. But I don't remember any of it now because it wasn't something that I, I wasn't learning in the way that a child was learning. I was learning in the way that we're taught to learn in order to pass examinations. So by the time I left that examination hall, I couldn't have told you anything about anything because I, it, it all been splurged out. And, and now I was divested of anything I'd managed to kind of like suck into my system and hold there. But the way children learn is they're looking, they're noticing. They're noticing and piecing together. They're playing an ongoing jigsaw puzzle where they're quite okay if that bit's in the wrong place. Because, ah, because that's interesting. I had that bit in the wrong place. You know, that should have gone there. Mm, okay, I'll say. So when they say this, it doesn't mean this. When adults do that, it doesn't mean you're placing together. You're trying to work out the rules. And that process of working out the rules rather than trying to memorize the rules and walk, walk around with them all and trying to sort of... That, that's not how children do it. So I don't believe children are, are intrinsically better, inherently better at learning languages. I think children just have better language learning strategies. But we have the advantage. We have the advantage because we can, we can um, in some sense, because we can, we can develop that and we can use reading. We already know how to read. That's the first thing. And the second thing is we already have this huge uh, ex library of experiences and knowledge and all the rest of it that we can access in, in our minds and connect to children don't already have that now children are more dexterous as it were at this process but we have a, you know so so let's say they have a as it were a faster processor but we have we have um more we have a, a greater hard drive because we've got more to link to so this what is what i recommend 
Uh, if anything from this process is useful to you, please go. You know, feel free to use it, develop it, change it, whatever, whatever works. Um, I hope I've explained this. I will put links. I'll put it. I'll, I'll, I'll put the name of the book that I recommend because you can uh, the Mohali below. I'll link to reader.quaranite.com uh, where you can pick up all of these all of these references really easy just click on the verse go down you know cut and paste bang it's in your document and uh and that's it so then you read it and you say, yeah i really do i understand these now you've got a history with these words you've got a you you know more about them it's about knowing more about the thing so if you find it something hard to learn just go and learn a lot more about it that's the way it works and then you know that's that's a way I think that works. Don't beat yourself up too much about the grammar. Uh, I talked about grammar in the last talk. If you want to get into all of that, certainly it's, it's, it is an advantage. But if you have to choose, especially to begin with, uh, between vocabulary and grammar, take vocabulary. Because the more you read, you see, reading should be the process, you know, two, three, four, five, six, ten pages a day, whatever it is. And you're imbibing you're imbibing the, 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 you're imbibing the the grammar at the very least notice it you know why why is that got tanwin and that hasn't got tanwin tanwin is like for example you know the two the, the two the double doma or or, or kasra or whatever it is why has this got one and why has this got two and and you'll find you know just noticing that just noticing that kind of places a seed in your mind and then what, what, uh, there will be a reason there's a reason for it and then you know, let's say you get to a stage and you, you think, OK, I want to know more about the grammar and you find out what idafa is. So, OK, so that's why it's doing that. That's why that's not this, why it's like that. But if you've already been noticing it as you've been as you've been reading it, you, you, it'll just slot into place. It's you're just putting names to things that you already intuitively understand because you're reading it a lot. This means you can learn to read with understanding and that your process of learning isn't separated from your reading of the Quran necessarily. It's actually related to it, intrinsically implanted in it, and so that you can learn and grow spiritually as a part of your learning to read this book. And again, those reflections and thoughts you're having, which are really on a sort of a spiritual food basis, become, uh, they permeate, they percolate through your understanding of the the grammar of the, of the of the meaning of words and all of that. So, this seems to me to be a more productive way of approaching this, uh, at least at least to my mind. And so I'm I, I I did consider for some time, you know, become you know sort of making a huge you know spending three years teaching all of this. But I don't think there was any point. But I I've for those who can take it, I've summarized in this talk the the very quintessence the essence of what i've learned and and i think that those people who who would do something with it will you know this is enough for them so anyway i'm going to leave that there uh, i hope everyone is well and that's all for now if you're listening on youtube you can download my full translation of the quran free and other books from quranite.com using the button in the top right hand corner or buy hard copies there at 10 percent less than on amazon I do not monetize this channel and I make all my work available free, but you can use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short. Eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds. <laughs>